Okay, in this video presentation, we're going to look at RCCBs and RCBOs and specifically with our Crabtree Starbreaker Consumers Units. Before we do that, I'd like to introduce a new member of staff, or actually a returning member of staff, as Joe Robinson returns to the electrical team. Hello, Joe. Hi, guys. Good to be back. And Joe's got uh, some extra roles within our department that's actually going to grow our provision. Can you explain the extra stuff you're going to do beyond yeah. our subject matters? Yeah, certainly. So obviously I'll be helping you and Matt out with the core areas that we study, but also we'll be setting up and hopefully running uh, a level four provision, which will be a HNC in building services engineering, which we're looking to get up and running uh, September 2019. So you could arrive at Tresham College age 16 and stay all the way through to get a HNC when you left. That is potentially possible, yep. That would be fantastic. So let's have a look at these consumer units next. So as an electrical team, we've been toying with the idea of coming away from a main RCCB switch. Industry don't use it as a main switch because in the event of an earth fault, it will disconnect all the circuits within the consumer's unit. So our two-way consumer units at Tresham look like the following with a main RCC B switch, which is rated at 30 milliamps, as well as our seven-way distribution boards. We'd like to move across to a standard double pole switch or linked main switch within the consumer units. But we're going to have some issues, aren't we? What are those issues, Joe? The main issue that we've got is that when you look at the size of an RCBO, uh, traditionally at the moment they've got these big blocks on the top that house an awful, a lot of the electronics uh, and the equipment that handles the RCD protection side of things. And when you compare this to our standard box that we work with, you can see it takes up an awful lot of room. In fact, if I just pop this in, you can see how much room it does take up inside there. So as you can see, this bit at the top here does fill up an awful lot of the box and if you've got a bank of these, you're losing a lot of space which makes it harder to keep your cables neat, see which cables are connected to which circuit and which terminals they should be in, so it is a little bit of an issue. We'd like to keep between the two, so we're going to probably show learners both of them, but we've, we've been restricted by the RCBO and we'd like to think that we'd have a chance of fitting the RCBOs, but of course it always comes down to cost and they are reasonably expensive, aren't they, Joe? Yeah, traditionally the RCBO does cost considerably more. The issue we've had with the main switch being an RCD, in these cases RCCBs, is the fact that we lacked discrimination, a word that's been changed, is that not right, Joe? Yeah, currently under the 17th edition of the regulations, we use the word discrimination, which indicates to achieve discrimination, you have to make sure that if a fault occurs on a circuit, it only disconnects that circuit. It doesn't affect other circuits that might be connected alongside it. But I believe under the 18th edition of the regs, Gaz, it's looking like that's gonna change. Yeah, we're looking to move over to a word called selectivity. Of course, we haven't actually physically got a copy in front of us yet. It's not, yet. not been issued. We've ordered them, but they've not been issued to us. Until we see it in black and white, we'll be going with, we're presuming it's changing over to selectivity. So we're sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Do we continue to persevere with our main RCCB switches, or are we going to fit RCBOs, or are we going to use a combination of both? Well, with the majority of the jobs being in the two-way consumer unit, we're going to be limited by space, as Joe just explained, unless you could solve that problem for me, Joe. Well, it's interesting you should ask me that, guys, because yes, yesterday we were visited by Anil from Crabtree, and he brought with him a brand new product, which they're just rolling out at the moment, which is this new RCBO. Now, you'd immediately notice that it does not have the huge big block sitting on the top of it. In fact, if we look at it side by side there, you can see quite clearly that it's a lot smaller. And in fact, it's actually the same size, the same dimensions as the traditional BSEN 60898 MCB. So that's really, really good. So they've taken all the technology, does the same job that's in this one, but they've put it into a much, much smaller place. And uh, Anil very kindly let us hang on to this one for demonstration purposes. So I'll pop this into this box, Gaz, and we'll have a look at how Absolutely. it compares. Absolutely, fantastic. Yeah? So you can see that's in there, that's slotted in really nice and neatly. Now there's two things that you'll notice that are different about this. The first is the fact we don't have this big block on the top. So look at all that room that we've got now to move, put our cables in, arrange them nice and neatly. We can trace the cables for fault finding and maintenance purposes really easily, which is good. And also you'll notice we don't have this uh, auxiliary wire either. We've only got the neutral wire coming out of there. So again, it's all about reducing the amount of space that those cables take up 
reducing issues with overheating and also making fault finding a lot easier. So I think that this is a fantastic little product. And I know what you're going to ask me, Gaz. Surely we're going to be paying through the nose for that. Absolutely. It's got to be more expensive because it's smaller. You would think that, wouldn't you? You would. Yeah. But actually, this new RCBO is exactly the same price as the existing RCBO. So there's no cost implication there when you're looking at the two side by side. So I think that's a fantastic little bit of kit and I'm really, I think that's a very innovative uh, bit of kit that they've produced. We'd like to think we're one of the first people to experience it as well. Mm. Annie was quite, you know, quite, quite keen for us to have mm. a look at it, wasn't he? Yeah. The ranges um, for those RCBOs in amp range, where do we go between? Uh, I believe it's from six amp up to 40 amp. It, okay, six amps to 40 amps. Is there any other benefits to the electrician other than its physical characteristics, in other words, it being smaller? Is there any other benefits to them? Well, there is one major benefit, which is really, really nice. Obviously, an RCBO has quite a lot of complicated electronics in there, very sensitive electronics. Those can be damaged under test conditions. Of course, we know that when we're testing insulation resistance on an RCBO, it needs disconnecting, the circuit needs disconnecting from the equipment so that we don't damage it. But this new RCBO is double pole, which means that the neutral is automatically disconnected when it's in the off position, which means that we don't now need to disconnect uh, the circuit going out from here. We can just carry out the test at the terminals there, again, saving time. So the electrician, we're going to have more room, in other words, within the consumer unit when we're actually connecting the up. Yep. But the testing process is also going to be quicker. Yeah, absolutely. Double, win -win. Uh, double benefit then, isn't it? So we'd like to thank Anna, wouldn't we, for that? So for much, coming down yeah. and showing us yeah. it. And we, we'd like to think that industry are going to be moving towards them. We love these consumer units for a number of reasons, but we actually now, even more so, yep. now we've got a miniature RCBO. So for the first time, we get to do the following, don't we, Joe? We hope this video has been some help. Is that what we say? Yeah. <laughs> Only me. <laughs>